I'm just having so much of a good time with this book. It Yep, that was a sex scene. Today marks the start of a very exciting video where I get to read one of my most anticipated fantasy books, and that is The Faithless by C.L. Clark. This is our non-binary book club pick for March. And Becca, Becca and the Books, is co-hosting. I'm just so freaking excited. I will be interviewing CL Clark. It's just gonna be an amazing, amazing time. If y'all are not following my book club, it is linked down below. You should be. What is my dog tearing up? But without further ado, let's just get reading. What is up, y'all? So Jesse is right and sick. It has been a couple days and uh, we're currently doing some pop-up readings, friends read with me um, sprints with the beautiful patrons because I am sick. So I've just spent the day organizing and doing stuff around the house that needed to get done. And so far, I have flown through 40 pages of The Faithless. I swear to God, I started this like an hour ago and the intensity of the highlighting is real and I'm still on page 40 despite the fact that I'm annotating the shit out of this book and writing tons of notes. I'm already loving it more than Unbroken and that was a 5 out of 5 star read. It says a lot that I'm loving it more than Unbroken because that book is just such a phenomenal piece of fantasy. I love how in The Faithless you just really hit the ground running. It starts out with conflict, it gets very political very very fast, and you are just really thrown back into the story. But uh, C.L. Clark does a really phenomenal job of leaving reminders for the reader of things that happened in the first book. Already it is so political and conniving and brutal and the tension between Turain and Luca is nothing short of real. Just already loving the way that magic has been introduced into the story. Like, I think that that slow pacing, slow introduction of magic has been handled so well. And I'm yearning for more. I'm yearning for some magical battle scenes. There is depiction of Turain as having PTSD. And I think that that is a really important addition to her character, especially given everything that she's been through, especially seeing how her, how like she is healing or not healing from the events that caused her to have PTSD. And then you also have the tension that's on her relationship with the Jackal. The Jackal is like my favorite character. I love the Jackal so much. She's such a badass. I just, everything about this book so far is giving to me. It's just giving. Like one thing I can say about Terrain is that she really does need to get smacked with a wet fish. How is she still saying that Luca isn't dangerous, that Luca is not their enemy? I'm like, I'm like, I know y'all had some intimate times, but they couldn't have been that good. No sex is that good. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, but I'm gonna need her to get a wake-up call. Hello cuties and good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So today is a very exciting day because Jessie is no longer sick and that is very, very exciting. So we've got a bunch of things to do, some errands to run, gotta get our eyelashes touched up, gotta get this hair taken care of. Mama is currently making yours truly an omelet. It is chorizo and gouda cheese and what else, mama? Sausage and potatoes. Okay. So I'm gonna let her cook, it's gonna get loud, and then I'll give a reading update because I have so many things to say about The Faithless. So pretty. Thanks, Mom. Okay, same day we are in the evening, though, and I have things to say. On page 129, and just so many things are going through my head. First of all, Luca 
is just not a compelling character for us in terms of her storyline of her trying to take the throne, trying to show her uncle who is Duke Regent that she is strong enough to rule and he's very clearly planning on usurping the throne from her. But there really is nothing other than her birthright that is making her a compelling case for her, like making me really want the throne for her. And I love that because it was kind of the same thing with Althea from the Mad Ship books, where in book one you're not really rooting super hard for her to take control of the ship and then she becomes a character that you're like yes you want her to rule. I love that she's kind of giving Sansa Stark in some ways not gonna lie. I hate to bring Game of Thrones into it but it's just like a really good character comparison unfortunately. So I've noticed that her mother's ancestry keeps getting brought up. Her mom had some Targan blood in her veins that was like a rumor and so I'm wondering now that the Targans have really been introduced you're getting to see the other clans as magic. You're, the, the Targans have shape-shifting bear magic and they are so cool. I love them. I love them so much. I'm like banking on an alliance between them and Terrain and I'm not going to give any spoilers for anything. But one thing I'm curious about is, is Luca maybe going to develop some bear magic later on in the series, in this book? I don't know. If it happens, I'm not going to say anything, but that's one thing that I'm wondering and that would definitely help her take the throne because I'm just like she doesn't really have any allies and Terrain is not a strong enough ally to help her get the throne anyway and so I'm just like how else is she gonna do it without power without magic without that kind of sway and the other thing that I'm kind of realizing is that Terrain is so young you know how earlier on in the vlog I was just bitching about how silly she is when it comes to Luca and I remember that this girl is in her early 20s, like, yes, she's a soldier, she's a warrior, but she's still so young, she still has so much learning to do, and you really see how young she is in this book in particular. She is already 129 pages in, just made some very irrational heart forward decisions, decisions that I too would have made to be honest, and decisions that are only I think going to serve her character in terms of growth moving forward. But there's a part where she is said to be stalking through the palace like a wet kitten and <laughs> if that isn't terrain in a fucking nutshell. I'm just having so much of a good time with this book. It is amazing. I I can't wait to continue, but it is evening. I'm getting ready for bed. I've just showered. My eyelashes are not done, but my hair did get touched up. Like, look at that line. I just love my barber, and I love getting to rub my hand over my bare scalp. It feels so good. My mother is deeply dismayed. Every time I cut my hair, she sheds a single tear. But I'm like, it's already gone. Those of you who don't know, uh, last summer I chopped off 16 inches of hair. It didn't look like my hair was that long because it's so kinky, but like my hair was, it was long. And my mother, I, I don't think she's ever gonna forgive me for it, to be honest. And it's gonna do it for this update. I'm so fucking excited. Also, oh my God, speaking of mom, she's sick now and I'm so sad. So I'm making her tea right now. I'm brewing her some chamomile. We still have gold of the boyo that she had made from when I was sick. And I'm just going to be nursing her back to health the way that she nursed me back to health. I'll see y'all tomorrow. This is outfit of the day. We call this messy Jessie extraordinaire. Mama and myself just got a call back on an apartment. We've been on a mission to find her some good, beautiful housing that is disability friendly. Um, unfortunately, my dog keeps attacking one of her dogs. My dog is very territorial. So, you know, like, I moved my mom in with me. For those of you who don't know, I moved her and her two dogs in with me um, so that I can help take care of her and stuff. But Akasha is just not having it. Yeah, Akasha's not having it. So, we've got an apartment that we're going to be looking at. We, there's two apartments tomorrow that we're going to be looking at. Um, it's actually been, like, it's something that's really been frustrating is the barriers to housing when you're disabled because you know how a lot of places want like three times the monthly income my mom doesn't make that because she's on disability so places have denied me as her co-signer and I'm like well I'm the only one taking care of her like how else 
is a disabled person supposed to find housing if they don't have someone with a 700 credit score to co-sign for them you know what I mean it's just honestly it's just so gross like so I'm just bringing it up to make anybody who isn't aware of how hard it is to find housing when you're disabled how hard it is to find housing when you're disabled so cross your fingers for us we want a place where mom can be mom and her dogs can be safe and happy and Akasha's developed really bad aggression issues as a result of like other dogs being in the right. space yeah park, so like park. yeah so like I tried to take Akasha to the dog park which if you um, have been following me for a while you know that like we're always at the dog park every other day and I tried to take her and she immediately tried to attack two dogs so we're working with a dog trainer on her aggression issues we've got a session tomorrow or next week and so basically it's just best for all of us to not cohabitate which really sucks um but it is what it is like that's just that's just life it's like it's been stressful for all of us but i love my mom so much and i want her to be safe so i am drinking some really good iced coffee and i have 200 pages left of the faithless before my interview with cl clark tomorrow so I'm going to be binge reading that and then going to a coffee shop to work on my novel as well as write up interview questions for CL and I'm really, really excited. Okay, so as of right now, I'm on page 300 of The Faithless. There's 464 pages, so 164 to go. And all I can say is cannibal witches. Cannibal witches. Like, the clan magic is... It's off the easy in this book. It is so freaking cool. I cannot wait for this interview. I cannot wait for this discussion. Like, I'm I'm just so geeked for it. And also, just things are getting hot. There is so much backstabbing and characters are dying left and right. There's so much action happening. And I'm really loving the painstaking politics. The way that sometimes these characters are put in situations where you're like, how the fuck are they gonna get out of this situation alive? And it's just, it's really cool. I'm truly, truly loving this book. And there's been some devastating deaths, some heart-wrenching scenes. It's, I can only imagine what the last hundred and some pages are gonna hold. I'm just having so much of a good time with this book. It We're about to have a Shit's Creek moment with our caldo de pollo. Um, yum, yum. <laughs> Aw, who's sicky? Oh, where's Aww. Big Weld? Who's sick? Cute. And Get Grandma's on. here. Hi, abuela. Hello. Miss you. Mwah. And a nook is here. Hey, look at her. Damn, y'all. CL Clark said, Y'all asked for a sex scene? Y'all gonna get a sex scene. That threw me off so much. <laughs> Yep, that was a sex scene. And that's all we're gonna say about that. A couple things that I forgot to mention about the book while reading it. This book is definitely giving Petra and Dragon Republic vibes, if you know, you know. And I'm really appreciating the commentary on boarding schools and reformatory schools and the, the various ways that colonizers will use one's tongue and upbringing against them in order to beat them into emotional, religious submission, etc., physical submission as well. Um, the the using of children as pawns in war it's just getting whew, it is getting so brutal like there's so many scenes in this book that are just really freaking frustrating and I'm loving it also Luca is finally a character where I'm like yes now you are acting like a queen it is giving queen energy and I'm here for it we got to see some combat okay we finally got to see some some Luca action and it just it, it's not even just that it's not just getting to see her with a sword it's just the fact that she is finally thinking big picture 
and I am completely here for it. I'm completely and utterly here for it. We do have a package here and I'm very excited to open it. As I do so, I want to announce that there is this character who is introduced in this book. Her name is Philly. And I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, it's F-I-L-I, -I, but I see myself so much in this character more than in any of the other characters in the book. And I also have to say that the character that I'm the most swooning over is Aranen. Aranen is so fucking cool. I've always loved a priestess character. I've always loved a very religious um, magical god fearing character and she is just like exactly my type to a T. I am such trash for her. I ship her in terrain so bad, way more than her and Luca. I honestly don't even ship terrain and Luca, but let's see what is in this box. It's by Penguin Random House and the book is none other than Mr. Magic, which is the latest from Kirsten White, who wrote Hyde. Hyde was one of the most hated books of last year. I loved it. I did a reading vlog where I talked about it, and I just loved it so fucking much. I loved every thing about that book. I thought it was just a really fun carnival horror, some some great sapphic elements. It it was it was awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a nice little slasher at times. It was it was cool. I love the competition trope. All of that was great. So this is being published by Del Rey. And I am not really sure of the synopsis. I just knew that it was her latest book and it had a TV element. And again, I love that competition television trope reality like anything like that is fun for me especially like if it's a thriller what if the kids who were on a children's show like barney realized when they were adults that it had all been real that's already so creepy that it, that premise alone is very very creepy so i guess there's this tv show called mr magic the shadowy center of a circle of children's hopes fears and dreams felt like it had always been lurking in my brain lurking there in the darkness waiting for me to give him form and so this follows former child stars of a long lost tv show reuniting under suspicious circumstances i love that trope yes yep Yep. It sounds like the perfect book to follow up Hyde, to be honest. Like, I am so freaking excited about this. And I'm now going to be opening, like, something that is spicy. <laughs> I am so excited about this. You guys are gonna be like, what the hell is happening on this channel? But y'all will probably know that I recently did a video where I was in the bathtub reading smutty scenes from books with sex toys. <laughs> because it was sponsored by a sex toy company and I thought it would be really funny if I, um took out one of the vibrators and and read the sex scene aloud and for every I would increase vibrations on the vibrator just holding it in my hand not actually using it you pervs in accordance with the spiciness of the scene and I was using a vibrator as a microphone and at one point I was smoking a q-tip it was a whole thing and increase vibrations depending on how spicy I feel like a kinky librarian oh <laughs> all right you get I am your father fluids everywhere <laughs> I'd like to report death by heat stroke. Ah, I need to open a window. Help me. Oh. Why are girls so hot? That is a sex scene. So um, apparently another sex toy company saw that video was like, hey, will you make some sponsored content for us? And I was like, oh my God, here we go. So this isn't the content, but this is going to be a sneak peek of what they sent. And I am super excited because I have a fun Instagram post planned using this content. And so because of that, I very intentionally picked out the most like wild looking toys that they had because my concept for the Instagram post is basically going to be books that match the vibe of the vibrator. So it's gonna make sense. So you will see it. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm crying. These are gonna be so funny. I can not. I literally cannot. This is so funny. So this the the third one is currently on its way, but I have two, and this one is 
<laughs> this is what this one looks like. And so I picked it because it's really wonky looking. And so I'm going to be pairing this with books that have like a psychedelic feel to them. Uh, so I'm really excited for that Instagram post. Look how adorable it is. This is so freaking cute. <laughs> this is what one of them looks like. When I saw this one though, I was like, mm -hmm. Described as a tentacled and twisted sea monster who's ready to inhabit your deepest depths. I'm in fucking tears, you guys. I'm in fucking tears. Obviously, for this one, I'm gonna be pairing it with like deep sea aquatic horror books, and I'm really excited about that. I'm fucking weak. Look at that. <laughs> I have to change this lighting. <laughs> Why is it so squishy? <laughs> I am so freaking except. Nope, that's not the vibe. That's not the motion we're gonna be doing with this. Um. This is really funny, and I want to put this on display in my bedroom just for shits and giggles. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen, you guys. Like, tell me this isn't cool. This is so cool. This is my new favorite piece of decor. Stay tuned on my Instagram for that post because it's coming. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for this update. Um, I will check in with you later. Mom, come show the audience how hot you are. I am. Not. You're hot. Where are you going? Okay, go finish your thing. I just wanted to just wanted to come on and say hello. The interview with none other than CL Clark went amazing. Very, very honored to have been in conversation with them for a second time. The interview is linked down below. Mama Botai is feeling better. We're about to go to Kane's and get some chicken. And it's gonna be fun. We're probably gonna watch a little bit of The Emperor's New Groove. Mm -hmm. So this vlog is gonna end here. It was it was fun. Thank you for joining us for <laughs> the exclusive The Faithless Reading vlog. Hope that you enjoyed it. And we're gonna catch you in my next one. See you cuties. Also, this is today's outfit of the day. All of these items, including the boxers that I'm wearing, not pictured here, are from a genderless woman and queer owned clothing company called Bo something. Bo de Four or something like that. Love it, love it, love it. A, a, uh, uh. Okay, what's <laughs> My mom is like, what the fuck are you doing? Hello friends, hi, hi, hi. I had to come back and say that we have very, ew, Jack. <laughs> Jack is making gross sounds over there. Did you just take a sip? Are you making me wait? Yes, we were gonna have it together on Let's camera. Let's get on it. Oh my God. Celebrating. Anyway, we are celebrating the fact that we just got word that my mother has secured her very first apartment. And so we're having some celebratory beers. We're so excited. Solo apartment. So, yeah, solo. Like her own place. Nobody else is on the lease. It's right. just mama. She can decorate it however she wants. It's gonna be dope. So we're having some. This bitch. We're having some celebratory Heinekens. Cheers! Hey. I'm so happy for you, Mom. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so you. happy. You're so happy. Yeah. You did so good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Hey. hey. You raised me so well. I think the dog's happy too. Akash was like, yay, you move out. I get my house back. Yay. <laughs>